We are on. We're now live. We are. We are here. <laughs> Finally. Finally. It's been the longest countdown. <laughs> <laughs> so, welcome, welcome, welcome. We decided to come on here and meet our listeners. And so, I'm not sure if I were going to be able to see people's um, comments or not. But I have my phone here, and Deb has her phone too. And so I just opened it up, and I can see me going. Uh, <laughs> So we're there. Um, we just wanted to come and have a conversation as opposed to having a conversation on our podcast is to actually see if we to interact with you. And now I'm, and trying, I'm getting completely distracted because I'm trying to find us, find us on my phone. <laughs> oh, I've just had to put it down because I don't even know what I'm doing. I'll just admit it. I don't even know. So oh, here I'm, we are. I'm okay. going to be the... Okay, I found us. So I'm glad I found us. And so that means that if you do have a comment or a question, I'll be able to see us. There is a wee bit of a delay. So, but welcome, Deb. This is the first time that, we've actually come, come, out, come out in public and said, here's our two faces instead of just the voices. <laughs> I know. I was thinking that this morning as I put on lipstick, I was like, gosh, last week I did my podcast with Moira. I was actually sitting in my jammies, <laughs> and which which doesn't sound very professional, but it was a very hot day, and I had my lovely summer jammies on that I would happily go out in public wearing because they're cute, cute. Oh, they were they were super summer. cute. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, the, you wouldn't yeah you wouldn't know they were jammies, but yeah, I just googled as I put lipstick on and went, oh, last week I was in jammies, and Gosh. now look at you being. And, so and now I've got my lipstick, lipstick and no jammies, and beautiful dress on. Yeah, so yeah. so let's talk a wee bit about, um, for, for listeners that have been listening to us for a while, we were doing the Deliciously Motivated Mindset, and just a PS about why it's called Deliciously Motivated Mindset is that it's our initials. D for Deb and M for Moira is the same as Deliciously Motivated, and that's the secret behind how, why we titled that. So does that mean I'm the delicious one and you're yes. the motivating one? That's right. Oh, oh. That's right. Well, yeah, we, 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 we can. Well, you're delicious. Yeah. Yeah. Cross. I'm going to cross over. Yeah. Yeah. Too. yeah. But yeah. what we wanted to do is to just talk to some of the questions that we see or in our own practices come up, which is kind of what, what uh, inspires us to choose the topics, what to speak about. And anybody that's got ideas or, or, areas that they want us to kind of unpack or riff on, please let us know. You can message us or put it in the comments below. But this is the first live that we've done like this. And I think we'd like to start coming in once a month to just do this. And so you can keep, you know, make notes about any uh, things that came up on, on different topics that we, we talk about. But I think one of the things that we were just saying before we came on camera here, Deb, was that a lot of times in our practice, we work with people who tell us that they're feeling stuck, that they're feeling stuck and maybe they're feeling lost and not quite sure what's the next step or what should I be doing? How does that come up for you, Deb? I just have to giggle because when you say that, I grin. And for somebody who's actually stuck, it's not a healthy thing to see someone <laughs> grin no. and go, yes, but it is really common. It is. And even before I even go into that, I just want to acknowledge that um, acknowledgement is a massive thing. So being stuck, yes, but even a couple of days ago, I was doing something and I became emotionally stuck and had to unwind myself to what was really going on and dig around into it. But just I want to let people know that they're human. They're here having a human experience. And so don't shut that down of being stuck and go, oh, I can't be stuck. It's my issue, this, this, and this. It's actually, okay, I'm stuck. Acknowledge it and you can move on. But you're not you're not special if you're not stuck and you're not special if you are stuck. You're just normal, if Absolutely. that makes any sense. Yep. Oh, you can do questions there. Yeah. <laughs> so I just, yeah, I just said ask questions. You can ask. Okay, questions. perfect. So, so being stuck is can be a yuck place. Mm -hmm. Can be a yuck place to be in. 
But the key is to recognize it and then get yourself out as quick as you can. Yep. And instead of feeling like it's Groundhog Day and it's just the same stuff. Because um, when it's that Groundhog Day, you're not getting ahead. You are not getting ahead. You are stuck where you are and everything escalates. And I know I giggled because recently we talked about this. We talked about when you're having a frustrating day, mm -hmm. that's the day that your clothes get caught. That's right, we did. Yeah. On the door handle. Yeah, yeah. And when you're stuck, it doesn't get easier unless you stop and look at it because it just gets bigger and bigger. And then it gets to that point you're running through the door and the door handle and your clothes get stuck. And then you rip your thing and you're just like, why me? I need to go back to bed and get back out the other side. And, you know, true story. And that, <laughs> it is. Yeah. But unless you stop, reflect, take action. Yep. It's just going to be like that snowball coming down the hill. And, you know, that's something that, that is a, a theme that weaves through so many of our conversations, Deb, is that the key piece in that stuck story, regardless of what it is, is as soon as you recognize, oh, wait a minute, I'm stuck, or I'm doing this, this pattern again, or having this kind of conversation or these thoughts again, is to stop, put your hand over your heart, and accept it because until you accept like it, what made me think of that was you're saying about the groundhog day is that you can't stop that pattern or that cycle until you just go oh here i am that's what's going on tell the truth this is what's going on and that's something that i love in our conversations with, with deb and i is we tell the truth we share and tell you what's really going on and what we have experienced and I think that that's that's why our our conversations are so much fun from from our perspective but but I and I hope it inspires people because our intention here is to help you be seen help you see you in what we're sharing and what we're suggesting yeah it's I did a social media post the other day and it's about being seen and heard mm. you know but just going back to the stuckness the stuckness the stuck, if you even if you don't want to do anything about it, <laughs> if you don't actually want to do anything about it, one, acknowledge it. And if that's if you the case, that's it, okay. That's totally. I think that's the thing, is if you can acknowledge it, you're already on the train to resolving it. Absolutely. But if you if you're not acknowledging it, it's going to get worse. But if you can acknowledge it and see it, recognize it, without even doing anything, you've already started the process of healing that stuff. Yeah. Doing things like holding your hand on your heart, mm -hmm. breathing, mm -hmm. shutting your eyes, taking yourself to a place. There's a lot of action steps to do that, but just one, acknowledging it, mm -hmm. is, is definitely the start to uh, relief. Yeah. yeah. But it's also about, because that's like you showing up for yourself when you acknowledge it and just go, oh, doesn't mean you have to have the solution either. And I think we do get desperate more for the solution. You know, we're in 2021 now, mm -hmm. and it's interesting people saying, I didn't learn anything in 2020. And I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. no, you actually learn, you actually learn something every day. Every yeah. hour of the day you're learning something yeah. if you recognize it. And that's it. It's that recognition that's acknowledging. If you see that, yeah. then that's it. You don't have to do anything with it because you've already started the process just by recognizing it. Yeah. But you know, that's the, what you're saying and we're saying about the looking for the solution and the, the thing of people saying, I didn't learn anything in 2020. I have clients will come and say that to me. Or, oh, I didn't do this, or this wasn't working. I think that there's human <laughs> nature is to look at what's not as opposed to what is, right? Mm -hmm. And so anytime we're stuck, stuck, well, that's, I guess that's the vibe, or the theme of our conversation is the stuck. stuck stuff. But the key piece here is to how can you be kinder, more gentler, and recognize at some point, you have to recognize that in order to be stuck, the solution's there. Yeah. But instead of getting our blinkers on and saying, oh, God, I have to figure this out, I have to work it out, maybe you're supposed to put your hand over your heart. Sit. And just sit. Absolutely. And then an idea will happen. You'll tune into one of our podcast episodes. 
<laughs> it's really funny you say that because I used to work in corporate and I was so conditioned to not stop. Yes, me too. And, it took, and 2020 just allowed me to ground myself so much more. But I, yeah, corporate, I was taught not to stop. You must not stop. And even when you're home, you've got to be thinking and processing around it. Now, I'm sure if I go back to those things, it wasn't true like that. It's just what I attached to, the story I had. Mm -hmm. um, but that, but that's exactly it. But the moment you just stop, you can't see. You know, as a business coach, people say, you know, you go into their business and you see stuff. Mm -hmm. And you go, well, have you thought about actually, you know, even just the simple things like, have you thought about taking your business to social media? Well, why do I want to do social media? I've never had social media for 40 years. Why do I want to do it? Just the simple things that somebody can see from the outside looking in is mm -hmm. so obvious and people sitting in their stuck yep. mindset of closed mindset is not seeing it but some of the suggestions i've made as a business coach to people they've gone oh that's that's a brilliant idea and i'm like oh my god in my head i'm thinking it's um logical yeah it's logic like oh my god how did you not get that i think it so actually quite often no i do say it i just went no i do say it i don't go mm-hmm and think it. I actually go. Well, you, really? You're really? Dead. Did you not? You're dead. You would say it. <laughs> really? Did you not see that? Um, yeah. This is this is exactly it. It is it is that. Mm -hmm. Someone's got to love the podcast. I don't know who it is. I can't Facebook user. I don't know. Throw us a question. Otherwise, we're just going to keep talking about being stuck in, oh, in the other. Andrea. It's Andrea. Oh. Hi, Andrea. We Hi, love Andrea. we love you too. Sweet. I'm glad you're here. <laughs> but Andrea, if you have any questions, you're welcome to pop them in the comments. Like I said, we, we likely will get a wee delay on it, but but yes. Yeah, it just I don't understand this. This is more is more is a technically um amazing <laughs> one. But it is, but it, it's really um obvious when we are, you know, and even I was just thinking about having a sick child. You know, when you've got a sick child and all your common sense, because you're in that chaotic moment, all your common sense goes out the window. Yes. And the logical and the common sense, and someone goes, my child's got a temperature, I don't know what to do, I just want to hold it. Don't hold the child. For goodness sake, you're putting your head on that child. You know, cool it down, take the socks off. You know, if I'm talking about a baby, just those logical things. Whereas we, we think, oh my gosh, we, must, we need to hold this baby, we need to hold it and just pat it and pat its back and rub it and everything. But what you're doing is you're transferring that heat to that child who's having a, a temperature moment. So there's logic in things, but you have to get yourself out of that cray-cray mindset yeah. to see that logic, that stuck mindset. But that stuck mindset, but that's also believing that the solutions are in your head and your logical thinking part and usually they're not they are from your heart they are the intuitive pieces that you need to feel I don't know about you but there's so many times where I've just done something and see people will say to me afterwards how did you know to do that and I said well I didn't it just yeah, presented a, itself as that's the solution to take that's the direction how did, to how did I not know not to do that mm-hmm like that, that, yeah, that to me is, is is an indication of being in flow right when we are in flow then we don't get caught by the chattering mind we actually then really access the power that we actually all have access to should we choose it but it is about choosing it should we choose, choose it, it? <laughs> and and that is exactly it and you're never going to get any answer when um there's a comment there. You're never going to get any answer when you're in that gumboot moment and your gumboots, are, your wellies, Wellingtons, are stuck really in the mud. <laughs> yeah, your welly boots. You're, you're not going to get that. And I think that's the thing. It's quite funny because people, I find I make decisions and I just do it. Um, like the parking ferry. I don't know if we've ever talked about the parking ferry, but the parking ferry. And so the parking ferry, when I go parking, I just know there's going to be a parking ferry and I'm going to, my parking ferry is going to be called upon and I'm going to get a park right outside with ease. No one's going to damage my car. There's enough room. You know, all these little things that I visualize and I just know. Mm -hmm. And I know in my no, I know. I don't, I don't even doubt it. Mm -hmm. Actually, no, I do doubt it sometimes. But when I doubt it, I don't get it. That's right. 
Because you just but you just put a filter over it. I know you just you know when you know you know, and people go, "How can you have a parking ferry? How can you have this?" And I'm left with, "How can you not? How can you you not? We've all got a parking." And I think that's the thing is, how do you not? We've all got one. Have you never asked your parking ferry for a park? And they look at you sometimes like you're. Well, I do get the odd weird look, admittedly, but you know that's exactly like it. You're some, people do. You just <laughs> landed from Mars or something. <laughs> Ta-da, don't you have a but parking you... ferry? I get more confused that they don't have one and they don't use it. <laughs> and then I go, there's enough to go around. And I think then that also debunks that scarcity mindset. People must honestly wonder when they meet me what they think. I love it. I just, I don't, you know, <laughs> you don't have a parking ferry? Oh, there's enough to go around. Like, But so that's the thing, though, but is, is that generally speaking, we are not taught that... Um, there is ample for everyone. Andrea well, had said she's be able to discern the difference. So I'm hoping she means discern the difference between stock and, and mind and oh, intuition. Mind, mind and intuition. Maybe it's mind and intuition. Let us know what you're you're saying, Andrea. Discern the difference. Well, the mind, the mind will always tell you a lie. The mind, can, the mind can always tell you a lie. Absolutely. And the mind will usually tell you something that in essence is fear-based. Whereas the heart will never, number one, it won't ever lead you astray. But number two, it's always, always, always going to be love-based. But do you know what you were saying about the parking ferry reminds me, I actually just booked, in, booked my car in for an oil change later this week. And so I have this thing with, with the place that I take it into is that I... I get to the point of when I know that it needs to be taken in and then I kind of look at my calendar and when will it fit and I will write to them and say I want to book my car in on this day at this time and I've been doing that for seven years and one time I went in and one of the me mechanics said to me how do you do that he says there's <laughs> never been one time that I've emailed in and they've said no it doesn't work <laughs> and I was like just because oh look we made Deb snort. <laughs> how, do you, how do you not do that? That's how do you not do that? It's like not? that's the time it's coming. That's the time that works. <laughs> and I think I think this yeah I think the thing there is also it's not us on this. You're doing it and you're not going. I'm an asshole. I'm gonna entitled or what do you think? You know I'm gonna get it on that day and I'm gonna I'm gonna jump right. in and else's queue. Yeah yeah. You're, you're no. not you're actually just saying this is what it is i see that i feel that that's how it is i would love it here it works with everything in alignment yep. and it just falls into place i don't question that stuff no. i don't it's only when people and i get more confused when people go how does that happen and i'm like how does it not happen it does not happen <laughs> and i don't think they actually under like I, I get really confused how they don't use the parking ferry or don't have that in alignment that's more my complexity of of it and i guess that's why you and i and I, that would be the same for you that's why you and i do what we do mm -hmm. to show people that's what it's there for it's there but it's not it's not a wholeness that i've got that and i'm going to do that it's just i believe i have trust i have trust in the universe i have trust in myself i have trust with others i just trust that's right in my core mm -hmm. it's going to work that way mm -hmm. but at the same time and what takes it away from that vibe of the a-wholeness, like you're saying, is that we're both coming from a, we're all connected. We are all one. And we're coming from a place of it's all the flow. Like I just said to you about that, I look at my calendar and I'm looking at client sessions and different obligations that I have, you know, talking to Deb in New Zealand here to record our podcast. <laughs> and where does it fit? Where does it best fit? Because it's, because I'm wanting to, to make sure that I honor everything else that I've got put in my, my calendar. And so there, therefore, of course, it's going to be met with, yes, of course, that works. But of course, right? I, I Just giggling when, inside when you were talking about that, because every time we've scheduled something, it's just gone, I'm thinking, oh, we could do it that day. And just as I go to say, we could do it that day, you go, I go. could we do it that day? And it's yep. just exactly the same. And that's exactly it. And it just means you're in flow. But when you're not in flow, that's still just as perfect. Absolutely. Because it's it really gets you to stop and um, 
acknowledge, analyze, check it out, just stop and acknowledge again. Go, well, why, why is this working? Why is this? No, it's not why. It's not why. I've, I've always said that we don't ask why. Why questions will always go negative. Yeah, why, yeah it's not why. It's, what is it? It's but of course. Oh, of course. What, what would it be if it didn't do this? <laughs> yeah. It, well, it just makes us think um, and expand our mind into something bigger. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. But it's also acknowledging how powerful we are. And I mean, when I'm talking about how powerful we are, we are creator beings. So don't know about you, but if I really step in and own the fact that I am a creator being, my intention is to create flow, peace, harmony, balance, calmness, ease, fun, quirkiness, auspiciousness. That's why I like the auspiciousness. <laughs> right? Well, shock. Shite gets done. When you're in flow, shite gets done. <laughs> and it's not shite gets done that destroys others. Exactly. It actually, it actually just gets done. Like yeah. it, just, it just happens. And it, it everything comes into alignment. Yeah. And when it doesn't, it gets bumped out pretty darn quickly. Well, when it doesn't, then then it's a, a time to then go, oh, I got, I got caught off guard. My thinking mind took over or... You know, I, I uh, took on somebody else's belief or mindset or or agreed to something that was good then, but but now I've moved forward and it's different different scenarios, different different flow in a different space, right? Mm. Yeah, I think I think we I believe we underestimate our own individual power. Yeah. And well, if we a lot put, of people don't even realize how powerful they are at all. Not even underestimating it. They just go, oh, no, no, no. Other people are that. <laughs> not me. Yeah, not me. Yeah, not me, not me. Well, guess what? There's over 4,700 characteristic traits, and you have every single one of them. Yeah. It's up to you to use them. And cultivate For the them. highest, yeah, for the highest and best intention for you and others <laughs> and for giving out to the world. Yep. And I, to me, that's the purpose of all of our life, our lives. That's what we're here to do. That's what, that that yeah. we are we are we're here. To me, we're here to to acknowledge and access what is our unique gift. I think that we all have our own flavor, our own spark, and our our responsibility is to to share it, to bring it. Even if that sharing is just literally looking at somebody in the eye and nodding or smiling or, or a few words of compassion where there's suffering, or right? So it can, it can be really, really simple. But it's something, in order to find it, this is going back to this idea about feeling stuck. Oftentimes people come to me and say, I have no idea what my purpose is. Well, everybody's actually living their purpose. Truth number one, you are living your purpose, your soul's purpose, because you, so you then, if you need to get deeper into it, you think to yourself, what do I do where I would love to do it regardless if I get paid for it or not? What do I do that comes so, so um, easily to me? Other people, easily. Yeah, it comes so, so easily to you. That you and people will yeah. say, Oh, there's your gift, and people go and you go, oh, No, it's just too easy, but it is right, yeah. And I and I think that's you know, but then they also go into comparing themselves and the rest oh, of it, you know, yeah. Oh, what do you do that's so easily? Oh, I'm a mother, my child is an angel, and this is what happens, blah 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 blah. blah. And you go, Well, that's that's something I don't want to be that though, I want to be something bigger than that. I'm like, uh, You have a legacy right there, you're molding that legacy. Truly. To handle life, um, you're a CEO of that employee who you'll never get paid for. Um, you're <laughs> definitely. Uh, oh, someone's made a comment. Yeah, I see um, that. We'll get to that in a sec. That's a good one. Um, but yeah, that's that's definitely. You are the CEO of that child right mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. 
uh, your HR, human resources of that child. But you're <laughs> a are, nurturer. You're it's not you're not just a mother. You're a nurturer, right? No, I know. And you're a builder. You're a builder <laughs> of that world. And to show them um, moralistically, but let them play and let them be themselves but without squashing their identity that's a that's a large role that people just go oh no i'm i'm just a mother yeah. i'm just a father just, I'm, I'm just a single that. dad i'm like oh my god you have <laughs> you've got a team of employees that you have to manage and good luck to you mm. like and yep. you don't get paid for it i'll just clarify that <laughs> oh but you get you get compensated in so many awesome ways yeah just yeah. not like, not necessarily money. Money. and yeah <laughs> um Andrea shared something here, and I, I really like this. I want I want to, to riff on this a little bit. She says, I struggle with once I've agreed to something to change directions. That's, that's actually a lot of people have that issue. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Well, we filter this one. Um, <laughs> that's a goodie. That's is, a goodie. It's a really good Andrea. one. That is, um. Yeah, see, I smile at that and I go, really? That's a that's an issue. That's clearly an issue. <laughs> and that is, guilt. that is guilt. That is guilt in capitals of something. Well, that's all. Somebody told you to do something. And this is your freaking life, your world. Like, okay, maybe I'll let Moira start because I'm just like, <laughs> oh, well, I know what I'll be doing. So maybe I'll let Moira start and then I'll jump in. But And then, and then okay. you'll wait in. So what yeah. I would I, say, I actually want to say I want to say thank you. Thank you for that message because I don't realize this is something big for people. I didn't realize this is something really big for people. And it clearly is for someone to ask a question. I've got my goosies now. It is big. So and I've always dismissed this. If anything, I've dismissed it and gone, really? Um, so this is beautiful. So thank you, Andrea. Thank yes, you. thank you, Andrea. But what I would encourage you to do is this is time for you to have a loving check-in with you because I believe that something like that comes up for people, and myself included, I think, sometimes. I can think of examples of that. But you know Deb just talked about comparing yourself. Sometimes that's what's at the bottom of it. I was like, gosh, what will people think of me if, if they know that I've said I was going to do this and now I'm, I'm being drawn over here? Or are you listening to a fear-based mindset of like, oh my God, do you know the thing that just landed for me uh, as I'm, I was about to, as I'm trying to think of how to describe this is the, a British ism that would say you made your bed so you have to lie in it. Oh. I don't know if you've ever heard that one before. But I have, the I whole, have heard the whole idea is it's like, well, you put yourself here so you have to stay here. Well, no, you don't. So the, the key piece is you are worthy of every single choice and every yes and every no. So, you know, something that you say yes to, yes, I'm definitely going to show up and do that. Then tomorrow, your energy might be different. You might have had some other kind of insight or you might be lit up by something bigger, better, more in incongruence with with your core. So the key piece too is that you, if you need to say, "Sorry, I'm not feeling it. I'm not going to do that." You can do that with grace and ease. Because I don't know about you, but I don't ever want somebody to be doing something with or for me just because they said they were going to, and they better come through. If it's not fit, it's not fit. That energy is shot it is. as it comes into your it's world. It's so heavy. And then they're, they're, because then the exchange gets wonky and the, it's like you're beholden or there's and, – and so you truly are worthy. And like I said, watch that self-worth and that self-esteem. You are worthy of saying, you're not just not feeling it right now. And it's okay. Your self-talk is incredibly important, incredibly important. But, you know, um, I, you know, there's there's so many fears. I wish we could do a whole podcast on just fears alone. There's so many fears that come up, and there's a fear of breaking in. You know, these are the ones that John D. Martini's 
given out. I've only got a few that I can remember. Uh, fear of breaking a spiritual and moral authority. Mm -hmm. You know, in authoritative figures, people who we think are authoritative, we do always, and I say always, subordinate to. So we put them up here and we put ourselves down here and we just run around on eggshells to please them, to do that stuff. I don't want people to be around me to please me. I don't yeah. want people to be around me who are unhappy. I want them to be fulfilled, you know, and and even, you know, we say it when somebody passes and they die. We don't want people sad for them. I don't want people sad for me when, when that happens to me. I want people celebrating and laughing about the moments we've had together Truly. and sharing that joy. Why do we, like, we, yes, the grief process, uh, but, but why do we want to do that? We don't want anyone unhappy around us. I've had employees who have come to me and, you know, they love their job to start with and then they've, then they're just like, this is not me. And I've known that. I've known that's not them. And I'm going, okay, I need to have this conversation with them to get them out because that energy they're putting into my business is not in alignment with who they are. When they first came, they've changed. You you don't want people unhappy around you. No. If you're in a, a weightless, heavy, if you're in a heavy marriage, if you're in a heavy marriage and you don't feel it, get some help. Get some help for you. Talk to somebody about it. And I'm not talking about talk to your friends. Talk to a professional. For goodness sake, you've got Moira and I here. You know, talk to a professional and I will laugh. Um, and <laughs> talk to people and, and just get and just get some ideas in your head. And if it means getting out, even if you are a have a religious background that you can't get out, if it means that you can't destroy your soul anymore by staying in that position any more than you are. Mm -hmm. So um, Andrea, if you want to do that and you want like think of your health. Put it this way. Think of a moment where you've been out of alignment or out of flow to something that you thought was important and you're doing it for someone else because you're clearly doing it for someone else or you've then had, like you say, a light bulb moment that this is not for me. If you continue to stay in that situation, share with us, what happened to your health? Were you sleeping? Were you eating? Were you exercising? Were you even just washing your body? Were you doing that stuff? Did you have a smile on your face? Yeah, Did when you was the last time you laughed? Absolutely. When was the last time someone wanted to be around you? So have mm -hmm. a look at those. And and do you want do you want that to be happening constantly? And they're the reminders I have of when I'm not in flow. And so it helps me go, um, Dr. John D. Martini says the law of lesser pisses. Who are you going to piss off, yourself or others? So I would rather piss off my mother and do something that's set right for me and my body to allow it to function than my mother. My mother has to deal with her stuff if she says, yeah. I don't want you doing that. That's, her. that's her story, her script, she's read it. Precisely. But here's the other part about that is that if a person is saying to you, no, no, you can't do that, that's not the right thing for you to do, that's actually an indicator <laughs> that says they are, they're missing something in themselves. It's got nothing to do with you. So then you can just kind of go, okay, thank you for your opinion, but I'm doing this for me because it's the right thing for me at this point. And it's it's really important to acknowledge that, that, that that's their opinion. Like you want to thank them because they're brave enough to step up and say something to you. Um, she's just said, I just had surgery, just had surgery this week. Yeah, Big oh, then, I know I've been idea. out of flow for a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've got my little erectes, my goosies. Um, yeah, that is exactly what happens. Look, I'm no medical expert, but I do know your body will take over if you can't get this thing in order. If you can't get your mind in order and your soul in alignment, your body's going to take on massive physical uh, reactions or interactions with you until you get yourself into. You, uh, that's Andrea's note. Andrea, this is the most exciting time for you in your life, I'm going to say, because this is now about you choosing who you want to be in this world right here, right now, what you want to give out, what you want to take in. This is your perfect time. And if you've just had surgery, um, this is when you get to really see those around you who are supporting you mentally and physically and yep. those who aren't. And this is a great clean-up time for you. What do you want? Inventory. Write down all the things you want. Yeah. Like, this is your time. Mm -hmm. Surgery is great because you're immobilized. 
with whatever it is, but you're a little bit immobilized. So let those fluff around to have a look. And what do you want? What, who, and what do you want? And you deserve anything that comes to mind. You are, you are worthy of every dream that you have. Yeah. So that dream can just be real. Yeah. Like, like the parking ferry. I don't know how people can't get a parking ferry. Just ask. <laughs> but Andrea, just ask. Just Not ask for your parking you ferry. Yeah. Yeah. Ask for your parking ferry to come and feed you grapes with a fan and, um, <laughs> and look after you. And look after you. But, this, but the beautiful thing is she says, I know I've, I've been out of flow for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I actually guarantee you haven't been out of flow for a long time, but you've been out of flow of what you want to do. So the end result is what you've been focusing on, whereas that flow will have put you to wherever it is. But you're in the most beautiful transition right now. Yep. Beautiful transition. Yep. Perfect timing. Absolutely. Yeah. And thank you so much for showing up here, Andrea. I appreciate your input. And yeah. that, that inspires you. I trust she's got some golden nuggets in this. This is fantastic. Absolutely. So this has been fun. So oh, I'm, we thinking, winding up I'm thinking we should be wrapping up because we've been on here for, for gosh, it's going to be 40 minutes shortly by the time. I wanted <laughs> two things I wanted to, aw, two things I wanted to say. When we do our episodes, we like to rate ourselves. And <sighs> Deborah like it when I, when I do that because it's okay. I'll rate myself first. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, Andrea, to, to come back to your you what you we were sharing with you is that rate yourself as you're going through unpacking what is it you want, what would feel good, what what what's choices, what decisions, what's giving yourself the right rate yourself on that scale of zero to ten. And you probably remember zero is completely at peace, feeling feeling really connected with all it is, yet yeah, zero for zen. That's, that's my zen moment. <laughs> and then 10 is that, oh, my God, I have to do these things because I gave my word over here and I should do this and I should do that. And blah, 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 blah. That's very stark, right? And throughout our days, we can go. We, we, we you know, go up, through, up and down through these numbers. The key piece is to have the awareness of it, acknowledge it, and you can bring yourself back down. I find I can bring myself back down to a zero very, very quickly, even if I've shot up to say a seven or eight because something happened or something came up or, right? So that's why it's nice to just create little moments in your day. Say, how am I? How am I doing in this in this environment? How, how do I feel about myself right here? How do I feel about myself using these words or making these choices or reading these things or not reading these things, etc. So um, all that to say, I'm going to put myself at a one. <laughs> <laughs> Just because that's what it feels like. How about you, Deb? Well, I'm going to put myself at a two. <laughs> <laughs> and the reason I'm doing a two is because... I have my little doggy, Ben, is at the vet today. Yeah. So that is playing in my mind um, quite a bit, even though I know he's fine. And I know and I trust and he's in the best spot and everything's working out that, you know, because you worry about these things, you know, what happens if he doesn't come home tonight? Oh, my God, he's in the best spot. He loves cuddles. He's going to have all these boys and girls <laughs> cuddling on him. He's going to get more cuddles there than he would at home even though I've written the afternoon off in case he does come home, that I'm going to just be on the couch with him. Because, you know, even though you have to go up on the side of the couch just to make him comfy, that's a <laughs> <under> small sacrifice. <laughs> we know that. We know that. But so so I've got that playing in my mind. Um, mm -hmm. And that's and that's definitely because I was like, oh, I would have said a zero or a one. And I'm like, no, actually, I'm a two because, because of the little bend. Bend. And just that little, little bit. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for hanging out with us. If there's if you watch the replay and you've got questions or comments, you can message us, me or Deb or both, or put in the comments below. But we would we intend to come back here on the second Tuesday. That's what this is, second Tuesday of the month. And we're gonna come hang out here 
with you. So if you do have questions or comments or needing clarification on any of the episodes that you're listening to throughout, because we're still doing them once a week, um, we'd love to hear from you. We'd love your feedback. And we're very, very grateful to you for listening and being a part of our deliciously motivated mindset inspiration. That's kind of what we're trying to do here. Trying. No, we are. Yes. <laughs> no, definitely with certainty. Uh, thank you, everybody, for turning up. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to say thank you to Be Live and the internet today because this actually worked way easier than my mind was like, okay, I'm just trusting Moira's got this one handle. <laughs> and just for the record, if you had seen me 40 minutes before we started um, trying to get things going, I'm like, um, so I was just like, this is going to work, it's going to work. So I'm going to say thank you to Be Live who's listed this and um, for our internet. But thank you, listeners. Thank you, Moira. And thanks for the fun idea of doing this. Yeah, this has been great. Thank you, yeah. Deb. Thank you, dear listeners. And we'll see, you. we'll see you next month. And we have an episode out today. Hope you're enjoying it. Much love. Thanks for watching. Yay. Bye. Bye.